Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating those growing vines animations that you see uh, pretty much everywhere. They're really, really cool. Um, not that many people really know how to do them or they kind of get an idea um, in their head as to how they're going to do them. Um, I learned quite a while ago a really cool technique to create these. So I'm going to show you first sort of a quick modified way of doing this, maybe like the lazy man's way to go. Um, and then the way that you probably really want to do it. It's a little more time consuming. Um, but let's check it out. Uh, first, this is sort of like the quick way. So here I'm going to test the movie. You can see we just sort of have the shape filling up in no real particular order. Same thing with this quick little vine. So really all of that happening in no particular order, not really following, you know, the way you would think that you would naturally see a plant or, you know, whatever it is that you have growing. Usually this is done with vines. Uh, so here I have this one. I'm going to hit control enter and you can see that it is really following you know the normal path you would expect something like this to follow. So that's going to be what we take a look at a second. All right, so I'm going to close both of these down and before we get started what you want to do is go out and find yourself some vector artwork if you don't have some. Um, what I did was I actually found some vector artwork that I purchased a good long while ago um, so I'm not going to have it available as a download or anything like that because I don't think I'm allowed to redistribute it, um, but I haven't really looked into it. So what you probably should do is go to a site like VectEasy.com and they have a ton of free vector artwork you can use. Bring it right into Adobe Illustrator and uh, that's what we're going to be working with. We're going to be working with a native .ai file, um, but you also should have no problem with a .eps file uh, either. So .ai file ideally though. So back here in Flash, the first thing that we want to do is go File New and open up a new Flash file. This can be Flash uh, AS3 or AS2 uh, because the max amount of coding we'll do is maybe throw a stop action at the very end of our timeline just so our animation stops. Um, but we're going to be working, this is going to be timeline based animation so you could follow along you know, pretty much as far back as you want. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. And uh, I'm just going to stick with the default size here, 550 by 400, frame rate of 30 frames per second. That's kind of important if you're using an older version of Flash. Up your frame rate to 30 frames per second. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and bring in our .ai file. Now, here I have Adobe Bridge and I've got my artwork.ai right here. Um, and all I've done is I've gone ahead in this .ai file and put this whole piece right here to the, to the uh, right on its own layer. And this piece to the left on its own layer because when we import to Flash you can choose what layer you want to import. So we're going to start by dragging this and dropping it right in Flash. Now if you don't have Adobe Bridge you can always go, uh, well let me just cancel this and show you. You can go File, Import, Import to Stage, navigate to wherever that .ai file is on your hard drive and uh, you know import it. Now I'm going to drag this back in, um, but you also should know that as of late, Adobe, you know, obviously way back when it was Macromedia Flash, and as Adobe moves on, they are making the compatibility, if you will, between uh, Adobe Illustrator and Flash much better. It's much easier to get artwork over. It maintains its vectorness, uh, you know, it stays vector, and all of that good stuff. Um, and you can even, you know, do this kind of stuff where you choose the layer you want. So I'm going to collapse both of my layers. I've got layer one, layer two. I can see layer two has the artwork I want. So I'm going to uncheck layer one. We're going to bring that in in the other file when we do the frame by frame uh, animation. So here with this, I'm just going to select this. I'm not going to import it as a bitmap. I want to leave it as vector artwork and I'm not going to create a movie clip symbol out of it. Um, what we can do is place the objects at original position. Um, we could set the stage, si stage size to enlarge here. I don't want to do that. I'm going to downsize the Illustrator artwork and then import unused symbols. Uh, import as a single bitmap image. Again, we don't want to do the bitmap image thing and we don't really have any unused symbols happening here. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that. I'm going to hit uh, OK and my artwork is in Flash. I'm going to hit the Q hotkey which is the free transform tool. Hold down shift and just downsize this like so. All right, now check this out. When we select this, it, we're getting this big bounding box. It's not raw artwork right now. So we could do one of two things. We could convert it to a movie clip. But remember, we could have just done that on import. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. When you draw a, just a, a shape with any of the flash drawing tools, you get this raw artwork. And you, one of the ways you know it's raw artwork is because you, when you select it, you get this sort of dotted overlay. It's a very unique look. 
Uh, so we want to break this artwork apart until we get that dotting look. The way we're going to do that is go modify, break apart, note the hotkey. Control B on the Mac, that would be Command B. So I'm going to hit that. And it's still not all broken apart, so I'm just going to hit Control B again. And there we go, we have our dotting. We now have some raw artwork to work with. The next thing I want to do is open up my timeline. So I just double click that tab like so. And I'm going to name this layer, by double clicking the name, I'm going to name it Mask. I'm going to add a new layer, and I'm going to double click the name, and I'm going to call this Artwork. Now I'm going to drag the Artwork layer below the Mask layer. And I'm actually going to drag my timeline way up here so you can see what I'm about to do. I want to right click the Mask layer and choose, you got it, Mask. Now that I've done that, everything on stage, well, there's nothing on stage. Everything's just disappeared. So what we need to do is add some artwork to the artwork layer, but we can't do this right now because it's locked, so I'm going to unlock it. The problem with a masked layer is when you unlock the masked layer, the mask shows as a filled shape. We don't want to see this, but we are kind of going to need it as a guide. So what I'm going to do is just set the mask layer to outline mode by hitting that little colored box right there uh, to the far right side of your layer. Now that I've done that, this is, by the way, is pretty much how I always work with masks in Flash. I just set them to outline mode just so I know, hey, here's the area that's being masked. Uh, look through me and see the stuff underneath, the content, the stuff that really matters. So here on the artwork layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my foreground color to a, a green, just a medium green. And I'm going to grab an ellipse or the oval tool uh, to draw an ellipse. We could work with the rectangle tool. You could actually work with the polystar tool as well. I'm going to go with, uh, with an oval. And I'm just going to draw it a, a wide flat oval beneath this sort of plant shape. And now we want to just sort of tween this up until it covers this whole area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop out here to frame 60. And I'm going to pull down just like I just did to select both of those frames. Now I could right click and just hit insert keyframe. Or you could use the hotkey, which is F6. I'm just going to hit insert keyframe here. We're going to be using the hotkey in our second method uh, quite a bit. So you'll become uh, quite familiar with it, trust me. Uh, so here we go. Over here we have one keyframe, which is a flat oval. Out here we have another keyframe. It's still a flat oval. On this keyframe here, out at frame 60, I just want to change this. So I'm going to grab my black arrow or selection tool. And I'm going to deselect the oval. Now when I move around the edges of the oval, I get sort of this rounded uh, line at the base of my cursor. So I'm going to drag that up. What that's allowing me to do is edit my shape. So I'm going to drag up, then I'm going to move over the edge again, and I'm going to pull it over to the right. Up here, it's come off of my shape, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit. And there we go, we have the area covered. So back here, keyframe on frame 1, we have a flat oval. Out here on frame 60, we have our nice big blob shape. Now we need to tween between the two of them, but look at this. We haven't uh, converted this to a movie clip, so that means we're going to have to shape tween. Well, I want the shape tween because the shape tween isn't really just uh, a, a straight, you know, transform, pull straight ways. A shape tween allows you to, to pull a shape apart like this and tween it in all kinds of different directions. So that's what's cool about a shape tween. So I'm going to pull this up. Select in between those two keyframes, just on the artwork layer, right click and just hit create shape tween. I'm going to pull this back down, and back here on frame one we have our flat shape. As I scrub across, you can, we can see it just grow, just like so. Great, I am going to lock up my artwork layer, and I'm just going to hit control enter on the Mac to be command return. And you can see we have a pretty cool just filling effect. But it's not really filling this vine in the, in the way that you would imagine a vine to grow. A vine doesn't grow and then the bottom of a stem where it's going to loop grow out first. And you'll get the point if you're following along with any kind of vector artwork. This just isn't normally how it happens. So I'm going to close this and I'm actually going to close this document and I'm not going to save it. Now at this point, you can stop and just say, hey, I can fill vines, uh, cool, I know how to work with the mask, with the motion tween, sort of underneath the mask, only showing through the part that we want. But if you really want to you know, step it up and take your work to uh, another whole level and really make those vines look pretty cool, you're going to want to stick around and check out this next technique. It's very easy to do, it's a little tedious, but again, with the help of some hotkeys, uh, we can pretty much make quick work of a vine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit File, New. Again, it can be AS3, AS2, whatever you want. Hit OK. And we have our document with our blank layer. Again, I'm going to bring in Adobe Bridge, drag that .ai file in, move Adobe Bridge out of here, 
close up both of my layers, and this time I just want to grab this layer one. It's the artwork that's to the left here in Adobe Bridge, this piece over here. That's all we're going to be importing. And by the way, you may have noticed this incompatibility report. I noticed it earlier, but I forgot to mention. Um, basically, all it's telling us here, look, the Illustrated document uses CMYK color mode, which is not supported in Flash because Flash, you're not using it in print. Um, so to import this document into Flash, use the RGB color mode. That's fine. We don't need to worry about the CMYK. It is just a black shape, and we aren't even going to see any color anyway if it had color because we're just going to be using it as a shape to mask. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And we have imported it again. Q is the hotkey for that free transform tool. Downsize this guy a bit. Drag him right over here. Make it a bit bigger. There we go. Now that we've done that, I'm going to switch to my black arrow tool just to get the transform handles out of the way. I'm going to hit Command or Control B, Command or Control B. There we go. We have raw artwork. Now what I'm going to do is name this layer mask as we did before. I'm going to create a new layer, and we're also going to name this layer artwork. You could name it something like animation. It's not really artwork. It's just really like a fill. So you can name it fill, whatever you want. I'm, I'm going to stay uh, very non-creative and just stick with artwork. So now that I've done that, again, right-click on the mask layer and choose mask. We've done this. We know, we know what we're going to do. We're going to set this to the outline mode, and we're going to unlock our artwork layer, thereby showing the outline of the mask. Now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and select this blank keyframe here on the artwork layer. Okay, you can see it's just completely white. There's nothing on it. So select that. We want to be working with our artwork layer. I'm going to choose a fill color. I might be moving just off screen here, but it's this this uh, kind of pinkish red FF0032. That's what I want to work with here. I'm going to grab my brush tool. Now, there's some brush tool options which are moving just out of my flash window, so I'm going to widen my tools panel palette, panel, whatever you want to call it, and uh, right over here, that's a bit too wide, right down here we have our brush tip shape, I'm going to stick with the just circle, and then our brush size, I'm going to go with the biggest, I want the biggest possible brush size, and kind of a little trick to make the brush size bigger is just zoom in on whatever you're painting, so you can see if I zoom in, that brush size stays that big, regardless of how close I zoom in, so if you want to make your brush tip bigger or smaller, uh, zoom in or out, excuse me, zoom out to make your brush tip bigger, zoom in to make it smaller. Uh, so there we go, we're going to be working with the largest brush size uh, Flash gives us. I'm going to make my tool palette nice and thin again. And now we are ready to go ahead and begin constructing our fill. This part, as I mentioned, is really easy. It's you know, very straightforward. All you need to know is that hotkey for creating a new keyframe, not new frame, a new keyframe, which is F6. So here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to use my pa uh, my tablet, I almost said pen tool, my pen or stylus with my tablet, and I'm just going to draw a straight line across the bottom here, just like so, and I'm going to hit F6. What F6 does is it creates a new keyframe while copying that artwork over. So you can see frame 1, I have the artwork. Frame 2, I have the artwork. So here on frame 2, I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. And I'm going to hit F6 again and keep building it. And just keep hitting F6 every time I place a line. And you just want to... Oh, you don't want to paint two lines on one frame. You just want to be careful and sort of space yourself. You can start with bigger strokes, and then as you get closer to the finish line to sort of ease it into finishing, just start making those strokes slightly smaller and slightly smaller and slightly smaller. Now, if you lose track, as I just did by stopping and talking, you can just select your keyframe. I can see there's all the artwork on that frame. Select the one before it, and I have already placed my stroke here on this. So I'm going to hit F6 to place a new keyframe. F6. And here, when we approach a new uh, offshoot, this little vine, we just want to make sure we hit both areas on each keyframe. So, again, just making sure that I've already placed something down. What I'm going to do is hit F6, paint here, paint there. F6, paint here, paint there. And on, and on, and on. And again, if you lose track, go ahead and just stop painting and just select the keyframe before. Say, yep, I built them both out. Now, as we get closer here, I definitely want to either zoom in or just make my brush size smaller over here in the tools panel. To save time, I'm just going to zoom in. So here we are. And uh, I have already created that, so I'm going to hit F6. 
and I'm going to actually paint two up there and paint a nice big blob there. Again, hit F6, paint more there and paint more here. I really want to make this speed up as it gets closer to the end. Uh, so... We're going to kind of paint bigger chunks at a time here. But by zooming in, we really allow ourselves to get that control so it really just zip right around and creates that nice line that we're looking for. That's the whole point here. All right, F6 to create a new uh, keyframe. And again, just keep building out as we go. So as you can see, it goes pretty quick, and actually I'm kind of taking my time here to ensure that I explain everything. But once you get doing this, you can really get on a roll and start flying and moving along pretty quickly. So don't let my lack of speed uh, deter you. And then I'm going to grab a big chunk there. Again, just double checking on my shape here. And a nice big chunk. And one more keyframe, and we will be done down here. I'm just going to paint all of that in. And now we can just focus our efforts right up here on finishing this out. So I'm going to hit F6 again. Paint in a chunk. Paint another chunk. Paint another bit. Paint another bit. Paint another bit. Now here we want to kind of be careful. We want to really zoom in and try to keep from making it look any wider right here. Um, so you just want to be careful and go ahead and just paint right across like so and like that. Don't worry about any areas you missed uh, because we're going to be coming right back through here and that's when we can be messy and just go over the whole thing and clean up any little rough spots. Uh, so it's no big deal. Zoom back out. Uh, again, hit F6. F6. And I'm not going to keep saying F6 because that'll get really annoying. But also notice every time that I create a new keyframe, it's automatically extending my mask, which is really great. Yep, I did it twice on that one keyframe, so we'll probably see a little jog in our animation. That's another thing. You just want to you know, take your time and ensure that you don't make any of those kind of stupid mistakes. You know, Maybe stop every once in a while and just ensure, reassure yourself that you're not really messing anything up. Okay, and as we get here closer to the end, I'm just going to make it really speed up a bit by just making my blobs a little bit bigger than they were before. There we go. So now that we've done that, we have our, you know, our full final finished animation, and it took 90 frames. So I'm going to lock that up, and you can see there's our shape, and I'm going to hit Control-Enter on the Mac. This would be Command-Return, and you can see that what we get is this very nice growing vine animation where the vine actually looks like it's growing. So there you go. We have created a very cool uh, animation. Use the mask, use some frame by frame animation and the brush tool which this is probably one of the main things I use the brush tool for is when I want to create this kind of growing animation. And you're not limited to just vines. You can do it with all kinds of cool different things. Um, so go ahead and try it out for yourself. Let me know how it works out for you. Um, and Hey, have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed uh, teaching you guys this. Um, so that's it for this one. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.